Hello there, hello there. Let's just give a few more seconds and we'll get started. I will start by introducing my guests. Um, we will be talking about some stuff. So please share the video. We have a really good interview, which I don't really like calling it an interview because I'm not gonna interview him, we're gonna talk. And he's already here, so just hold on real quick, Lou. Just hold on real quick. Um, welcome to the Austin Show. Get in line. Happy Tuesday. I hope everybody's doing good this evening. Um, I'm excited because I've been watching this gentleman's journey for a very long time. I've seen him in passing, but never really got to like get at him to introduce and like powwow with him. But um, we've been around each other with Sawa Batalo when he has his softball um charity event going on he's been on the teams before playing um you guys may know him as a dj personality mc number one party host in new york city uh, a cancer fighter member of terror squad uh, a man of many hats you know he in 2019 i believe um he went through something that shocked our industry world and we all became one big family to support him. Um, he ended up in a coma that shocked us and really had an outpour of love and support. And um, I just wanted to have him on the D. Essence Show so we can talk about his journey, his humble beginnings, um, his role in Terror Squad, how he's been surviving through the COVID, any up and coming projects we'll talk about some behind the scenes stories that he can share or any memories because he has such a resume in the hip-hop industry um so i gotta get in tune with that right gotta give you the juice right or if not we gotta get in line um also we'll talk about his new ig live show that he's that he's currently doing turn the table show which is basically a dj competition but we'll get more into that um you may know him personally through Luis Ortega. That's what he that's what his name is, but we all know him as DJ Pretty Lou. So I'm going to bring him on and we're going to start uh if you have any comments, put them below. Also, if you want to share this, please do so. Um and we might have to take a little bit of a break just to say what's up and give like a little breather for like 20 seconds and we'll get right back to it. So here we go. What's up? What's up? What's up, my love? What's going on? What's cracking? Good. Doing? I see a whole memorabilia up there. You know, these are my little, these are, you know, my little, my little toys. <laughs> Your little toys? Like, little, little toys I like to play with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm good. Excited to have you on the show. Part of my roster now. All right. All right. That, that's, that's what's up. That's what's up. How's everything with you? Uh, you know, maintaining, you know, enjoying life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the most important thing, enjoying life. You know, but um, you know, workaholic like I always am. Yeah, we we um we have a lot to talk about. Yes. You know. All right. So before we get started, I just want to thank you for taking the time out and trusting okay. my platform. Um, I know that we hit each other up a couple of months back trying to get you on the show and just schedules are crazy and everybody's busy. But now we have this COVID time that we're all kind of standing still a little bit. You actually, and you actually caught me on a good time too because, um, you know, I just, I just finished wrapping up my second season of my show. So, Yes, which we'll talk all about because I want you to promote that and kind of give us the premise of it. I was watching it the other day and it's pretty interesting. Okay. And it can be pretty harsh, but it is what it needs to be. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Exactly. You know, so we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, we're, we're all not born with a silver spoon. So Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So let's start off with, you want to introduce yourselves to the ones that are tuning in that are been under a rock that not too familiar? Who, who's been or people that would be viewing this? Usually that's what I say. Uh, how y'all doing? How's everybody? Of course. Uh, my name is Pretty Lou. I'm one of the one of the best MCs in the world, not just in the <laughs> East, you know, in the world. Uh, I've been in this game 20 plus years. You know, I'm, you know, I'm I'm from the Almighty Heavy Hitters crew. You know, nice. you know, Hot 97, Sirius XM, Shea 45, you know, nice. and all that stuff. You know, just 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 
having a good time, you know? So where's the name Pretty Lou come from? I'm going to give you the short version. Short <laughs> version. Well, basically, Pretty Lou, I always had that, I, I always had that name since, since, since junior high school. Okay. Um, they used to call me Pretty Boy Lou. Okay. Because um, I was always, you know, I was always up to my, 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 my fashion statement. I was always dressed well. I always had the finer things, you know, because I worked hard for it. You know, mm. I, I was always a hustler since the age of 12. Wow. So, you know, I never I never asked my parents for anything. If anything, I used to take care of my parents at that age, you know, and, and I used to go out and, and make sure that I was right. So they, right. they used to always call me a pretty boy and all that. And then I used to box back then. So it was like the pretty boy name was always there, you know. And um, to make a long story short, I, I remember going through some time and my brother was like, my, my, my younger brother was like, Yo, man, so many people just, they, they call themselves pretty pretty boys. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we, we need to change that. We need to change that. So my brother one day just took took out the boy and said, pretty Lou. And it just got stuck. I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, I thought it was a very, very, very girlish name. And I really didn't <laughs> like it. But, um, I, you know, it got stuck. It got stuck on me. And people started calling me that. And then it went from there. Well, well being a pretty boy was a thing you know what i mean <laughs> it was it was but you know you know, it, you know i didn't i just didn't like the pretty lou together like yeah. it just didn't sound very yeah. gayish if you want to know you want me to be <laughs> blunt you know but people started calling me and it got stuck and i had no choice and here we are today mm -hmm. and that's what we we're are. known for yeah that's right so give us a little bit of let's let's go back into time let's go into young Luis Ortega. Okay. Let's talk about a little bit of your upbringing, how your family was, what brought you well, to you this know, journey of hip hop. I mean, I mean, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. You know, okay. I'm a Brooklyn, I'm a Brooklyn kid. Um, you know, I came up with a, you know, you know, in a, you know, a family that's you know, ur very urbanish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, you know, not n n no, no, no high class at all. You know what I'm saying? We were, you know, we were like every other, you know, Hispanic family, you know, coming in New York, you know, right. and, you know, my mother, you know, working two to three jobs a day, you know what I'm saying? My dad being a construction worker, you know, and no. it was three of us, you know, it was three boys that, you know, and, you know, we, we, you no. know, we came, we came from a rough, rough streets, but, um, but we always had our heads together, you know, and, um, you know, I always, I, I was brought up to always fulfill dreams, you know, and that's Absolutely. what I always did since I was younger. You know, I always, I always move forward just to, you know, just to, um, to fulfill my dreams, make my dreams come true. And I worked hard for it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still, you know, I, like I said, I still grew up in Brooklyn. I was still a kid from the street. You know, we had to do what we had to do. You know, it was always, you know, things going on, the law, fist fights, and, you know. But, but you um, had a dream. Yeah, but, but right. But I always still had a goal. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, just growing up, just, you know, a typical growing up kid from, from, from New York. And, you know, we had our, I had my, my little dead ends, if you want to say, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. I had a, I had a, I had my first child when I was 21. Wow. You know and, um, you know, you have your little your little bumps. But I always, for some apparent reason, I always knew how to go over that bump mm. and became the person who I am now, you know? Yeah, that explains a lot of how you've been dealing with the life traumas you've experienced. Oh, I've been through hell. I've been through hell and back. Yeah. You know, people, yeah. you know, it's not all, it's all, it's not all smiles and it's not all, you know, it's not everything you see on, on, on social media. You know, I've been, yeah. I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. You know? Absolutely. And um, God has blessed you in many, many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you get into this hip hop world? I was always a hip hop fan. I was always, I was a, I what was, were we listening I, I a, to? I was a B-boy kid from the beginning. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was that kid that used to have the backpack with, with the with the 20, 20 to 30 freaking cassettes in my book bag with the, <laughs> the hoodie. You know what I'm saying? And 
Yeah. So I was always into I was a 90s man. Like, I was always doing my stuff. You know, shout out to my brother creating here. But, um, yeah. You know, but I was always a hip hop guy. It was, it was, I was, that was just me. I used to, you know, I used to always run home after after school just to go see video music box at 3 30. I know you were going to say that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, that was just me. You know, I used to go to Fulton Street. And I used to go to, you know, B Street and all that stuff to get my, you know, my, my mixtapes and everything. So mm-hmm. I was always up to par with, with, with my hip hop stuff. And I was, I, I always loved music. I always loved music. And I was always into the music thing, you know? And um, what just so coincidence is that, you know, while I was growing up, that I also was developing a voice mm-hmm. that, you know, that a lot of people was loving. Especially females. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I was a female. I was a female man back in high school. <laughs> it's all part of being pretty boy, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I was a, always a female guy. Um, what, what really, what really brought my attention to my own voice was that I used to, you know, back back in the days, I used to have my own telephone line in my in my house. So so I don't want to have to hear my mother telling me, "Yo, get off the phone, the phone bill, and all that stuff." <laughs> So I used to always have my own phone line, and I used to talk to, you know, I used to talk to, I don't know how many girls, but I remember this one girl, she, you know, she would call me, and she tells me, I'm just calling just to listen to your voice. And I'm like, my voice? Like, so wow. bad. She goes, because you have that, like, real crisp, raspy voice that turns me on. Oh. So instead of me seeing it the other way, the way she was trying to say it. Yeah. I caught it as a hold up. My voice is different, but then she did say something else that that I would never ever ever forget. She always said, "Did you ever thought? Did you ever think about doing radio? Mm. As, you know, in the future." And I was like, "Nah, I never thought of that." And that I will never forget. That stood, and that's how I started pursuing more into what I wanted to do. You know, but were we DJing first or do we? I, what know, was I, your... I mean, not really, not DJing, really more MC and you know, MC. And I was, you know, I was just um, so when I was when I was like 16, 17 years old, um, at that uh, you know, growing up, you know, I'm about to bring my age out. I'm not saying my age, but I'm about to bring it out. I used to go to the fever. <laughs> We all know Mr. Fever Salvatello now. Yeah, shout out to Sal. <laughs> Sal has a lot to do with my career because Sal actually let me in at that age. Yeah. I wanted to see performances. There, was, there used to be performances going on. So I wanted to see a performance. And I actually went inside and I actually saw an MC. I don't know mm-hmm. if it was Melly Mel. I don't remember who it was. But it was somebody, and he was emceeing the crowd, and I saw how he was moving the crowd, and I saw how he was doing the stuff, and I was just like, that's what I want to do. Look at that. So so I was just putting two and two together. But mind you, you have to also understand that I was into sports. I was I was boxing. I was playing baseball <laughs> for high school, and I was also, you know, I was boxing at that time. So that was really, that was my main, that was my number one focus. But the, the MCing, I was doing it for fun. I was actually doing it to get girls and trying to get into the spot and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That was my yeah. mentality at that uh-huh. time. I was young. And, um, and you know, I was doing a lot of, like, block parties, hooky parties. I was doing a lot of hooky parties. You was being um, trouble. That's what you was being. Yeah, I was a, I was a troublemaker, too. Not, not <laughs> like that, but, you know, I was, you know. But, um... And then you know, you know, the, the 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 my boxing career didn't really go nowhere because I got into a into a car accident. Okay. And then um, you know, I started pursuing the MC more and more, and and it became it went from being fun to a little hobby to a career. And then you know, it became professional after that. Yeah. And I started doing my professional gigs in the early 90s like no in the late 90s i'm sorry late 90s and early 2000s it turned professional and then, and then that just opens up all these other doors and here we are again and it just, and it, oh, right and it opened up a lot of more doors and then 
I started doing my own radio because you know I wasn't getting into radio. I had to, you know, I, I had to work. I have to work. You got to work through it. it. Wasn't landing on in your lap. Absolutely, so I, I know. Radio. I started doing my yeah. own online radio. Um, I had my own online radio show. It was it was called Front Stage Radio. I did mm -hmm. that for seven years, and it was the number one online radio show in the country. Nice, nice. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you know, from there, I end up doing Sirius XM, and then from Sirius XM, then from Sirius, I end up my dream end up coming true, and now I'm on the number one station in New York City, Hot 97. Right, and that's where you is that where you became the heavy hitter, part of the heavy hitters. I became part of yeah, yeah. After 20 something years, yeah, because I should have been the heavy hitter 20 <laughs> years ago. But yeah, yeah, I finally became you know one of the heavy hitters and all that. Shout out to the boss man enough. And all that stuff. So you know, it's been a, it's been a great road. It's been a great road. So how did all that transpire into you becoming a member of Terror Squad? And for the ones that are watching, watching, what is your role in Terror Squad? There's no role. Okay. I don't know why people think there's a role. There's no role. It's okay. Just, we family. We're family. Okay. We're family. Joe's my big, big bro. That okay. Is, that is my big bro. You know, and everybody, Got it. we just, we're, we're a family thing. You know what I'm saying? And we work together and all that stuff. You know, we're just a whole one big family. That's so dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Joe is like, that's, that's my heart. That's my heart. You know, that man, that man, I'll do anything for that man. Do we have any like behind the scenes stories or memories that you would like to share? Because you have done so many events all over the world and. and... Behind the scenes? Yeah, something interesting. Well, I mean, the, I think, I think, <laughs> shout out to Create, my brother Create here. Um, I think the only, I think the biggest memory I ever had was when I was coming back from whatever from my ordeal that I went through last year and rocking out fifty thousand at the Barclays Center in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. Beautiful. That's probably the best because I, I was on stage with my children. Yeah, I brought all three of my kids. Yeah, Summer Jam too. I saw somebody write, you know, Summer Jam was big, but that was, <laughs> but that was big. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in. <laughs> yeah, that was big. That was big. That was like the biggest moment in my life, coming back. And the best part is that when I, once I got on stage and people saw who I was, yeah, everybody got out from their feet and the yelling and the screaming. And at first I was like, who, you know, I thought Jay Z was behind me. <laughs> it was it was really for me and it was it's just a, a moment that I would never forget. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that was that was, besides having my kids, I think that was the, the best moment of my life. Now, if that was the best moment of your life as of last year or this year, what was it before then? Oh, before? I don't know. I've had a bunch. You know, you know, being on radio for the first time, that was a moment. Um, yeah. Coming to amazing feeling. Yeah. There's so many. So I have so many great moments. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard to tell you which one. What, which one is? Yeah. The best moment, you know what I'm saying? Well, if anything comes to you, let us know because it's oh, you know no. we always oh, want oh. to know. You, you know what? I'm gonna tell you right now. My best moment in my career is my career. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It's my whole career. Yeah. And, 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 you know, just because of, not because of what I went through for the past mm -hmm. five, six years, mm -hmm. it's because of what I went through from the beginning to now. You know what okay. I'm saying? I the never journey. want anybody to think that I became who I am because, you know, um, because, you know, I started, you know, fighting a disease called cancer, you know, I had leukemia and everything. I never wanted... I don't want people to think that's because because of that is what became pretty little no. Pretty little right. In the making from the nineties to now. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. If, if we want to say what was the biggest moment of my career, I would actually say it was my career. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people on here are saying marriage. Oh, but that's <laughs> personal. I don't know why people say that's, that's personal. personal. <laughs> We're not talking personal. We're talking about careers here. I'm not we'll get to that, that later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's they, they're dying to get into my personal life. 
I do want to take a quick short break. I just want to say thank you for everyone tuning in and supporting the live. Please share if you can. Uh, we're here with Pretty Lou that uh, is part of the Heavy Hitters, part of Terror Squad, Cancer Fighter, man of many, many, many hats. And we're happy to finally have him on the De Essence show. Hopefully when we get to the studio again, you come on and we have a sit-down powwow chat. All right, all right. That's what's That'd be kind of dope. Yeah. So we're going to go into this other side of you that has been a journey and it must be very scary and it must have tested you so many times of just right. your faith. Um, it involves your family, your children, your cancer journey. Wow. When, when did this all take place? I mean, I've done my research and I, I know what kind of cancer it is, what it does, and I'm very familiar with the hospital. I used to work in oncology department in the Harkness. Um, oh, of right. Kind of right. Of my hospital. Yeah, I was born there. My my family works there. I did payroll there. I did a bunch of stuff at Columbia Presbyterian. And then I said, you know what? I'm following my dream, and I left. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, yeah. That's that's that ho that hospital is my heart. Yeah. I, I moved to my house that I'm in now because of that hospital because I needed to be closer to it. I mean, I could imagine. I mean, I live in, I live, in, you know, I, I, I'm, of course, I don't live in Brooklyn. I moved out of Brooklyn. I live in Jersey. Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to be a little bit more closer. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I wanted to be just in case, like what, like what happened to me last year. But, Absolutely. Um, but basically, you know, I've been fighting leukemia for six years already. It's going on six years. Um, You know, I found out six years ago. And, um, it, you know, it it, it it was a, it was a, it was a, if I, when I said a bump, it was a bump, but it was a, it wasn't even a bump. It was a, it was a, it was a wall that I hit. <laughs> it was a hard wall. And, um, you know, what, what people don't understand is that in the beginning, when I first found out what I was going through, shout out to my partner, Blessing here. Um, so, um, you know, it is nerve wracking. It is something that you're like, damn, you know, you know, when you hear, when you hear that word cancer. Yeah. Your whole world must stop. You know, it's not even stop. It's that you're already thinking, damn, I, you know, this must be a death sentence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you're already thinking, damn, I'm about to leave this earth. Oh boy. But I didn't never treat it that way. You know what I'm saying? I didn't treat it that way. I actually manned up, you know, put my chest up, put my head up high, and said, "You know what? If I'm gonna face the devil, we're gonna we're gonna face face to face." You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I did it for six years, and I never let it get me down. You know what I'm saying? Even even to the tragic that I went through last year, of, you know, me falling into the coma and 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 actually really facing the devil because that's what. It, you know, that's what it came to. I actually yeah. faced the devil. But still, even when I was in that state of mind, I was still fighting. And, you know, I guess I proved to the world that regardless of what happens, you know what I'm saying, you could still live your life and still fight a demon that's trying to mm -hmm. take you away mm -hmm. and not to be afraid of the demon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we, we I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna live forever. Of course, of course not. But you know, God has a purpose. Absolutely. God has a purpose. You know, when it's your time, it's your time. You know, but it wasn't my time. You know, God brought me back for a reason. And my, I felt like my job is to find that reason. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I opened up so much to people, mm -hmm. opened up to to the world. I opened, you know, in the beginning when I first opened up to the world and told the world what I was going through and what I had, mm -hmm. you know, my family was actually upset about that. You know what I'm saying? My family was up, call me how, what's up, my brother? Uh, my family was upset about it. They felt that it should have been a private thing. Yeah. But I saw why they said it. But then I also saw it on my part because I felt like I needed the world. I needed, yeah. I needed a stranger 
Yeah. To hold that rope and pull yeah. to the right track. Right. You know what I'm saying? And plus, I wanted to show also that, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a fight this. I'm a fight this, and I'm a battle it, and you know, I'm a I'm a go all out until it takes me. You know. And but but like you said, you've always had that hustle spirit in you, and nothing right. ever stopped you. So right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know that that's 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 what happened. You know, and and the best part is that I finally I'm also how can I say I'm also showing people, you know, how they could get through. Mm -hmm. their situation they don't have to have you know they don't have to have cancer they don't have to you know it could be anything people i, yeah. I have people that went through depression mm -hmm. bad depression like ready to mm -hmm. kill themselves yeah but because they see my story and they see what mm -hmm. i go through and sometimes you know, like you gotta understand the people that hit me up all the time like even today today somebody hit me up and was like listen you know and i and i and i was heartbroken a little bit this morning because somebody hit me up and was like listen i have a family of cousin that's that's dying that's actually about to die mm -hmm. and she's dying from this and that and we just you know we would love for you to post this for us and you know you don't have to do it but that's god sending people to me oh yeah you know what i'm saying that's god absolutely and that's why i was like no you know i didn't even answer i didn't even answer them i just did it mm -hmm. you, you understand what i'm saying yeah and it's great to see that i'm changing people's lives you know, it's great to see that people are actually fighting back. It's great to see, you know, that they, they don't you have actually, to go in that black hole. You actually have a non nonprofit foundation, correct? That yeah, you create awareness and education? Yeah, it's called Pretty Lou, the Pretty Lou Foundation. <laughs> it's called the Pretty Lou Foundation. That's a foundation that me and my partner bless, you know, we handle, you know, basically, you know, it's a foundation that we try to, you know, help out anybody, you know, especially if they're going through situations like what i went through and everything else you know i have you, know, you gotta give back you have to give back yes you do absolutely mm -hmm. um it, and it's part of your calling as well and that can be your mission in life so i i say uh fulfill that because that's not working i have a lot of missions I yeah a mission every day yeah you are i mean i watch you and i'm like how does he do it all and it's it's kind of good for your mental space because it's it's another world that you can kind of release Mm -hmm. Everything that you're going in, your, you know, your norm, which is very hard. You know, I, could, I can't even imagine. I have um, DJ Tommy Riz here that also wants to say that you have been the biggest motivator and helped him uh, pull through his most current rough patch. Um, and the show is getting a lot of attention. So obviously people Thank are you. enjoying it. Yes. Thank so you. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah. It's like, um, people, like, it's like people like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I do things. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, it, it doesn't take much, you know. It, sometimes it takes one word to change somebody's day mm -hmm. or even a nice gesture. So what you're doing is beyond capacity. How are we feeling today? Um, and before we say, before we I'm talk fabulous. about that. I'm feeling great. I'm good. I feel your spirit. I feel that it's a very I'm good, good spirit. I'm good. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going on almost next month will be one year without treatment. Woo! I'm, I'm yes! praying that I'm praying that next next month, I think it's up to my you know it's, it's up to my, my my doctors and everything, but I think I'll be in remission next month. Oh, yes. And I think I'll be ringing that bell next month. So, oh, how does that feel? It feels great. I'm I'm alive. It's been a long battle, right? It's been a long battle, but you know what? Every day, every day is a battle. Depending yeah. No matter what it is, I'm just happy that open my eyes. Yeah. Every day and thank the Lord to give me life once again. Because people, what people don't also understand is, I live my, I live my life every day like if it's my last. And you know the true meaning of that. Right. Because you, know? you actually have lived it. That's right. Yeah. So that's what you know. I'm, Real I'm, quick. I'm, Real quick, not to get into an eerie type of discussion, but is there anything you can speak with us about your experience being in a coma? That's another, that's another show. Is there one thing that you can, that's, like, give us an insight? Do you hear? Do you actually hear your loved ones speaking to you as they yeah, say? You know what? That, you do. 
that I'll tell you. That I'll tell you. But the rest, that's 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 a, that's a, that's a, that's a three hour show. Oh, then we might have to do it because I want to know. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, you know, when I was in that state, yeah, you you know what's funny? You do hear your family members talking to you while you're in that state. That you do hear them, but you don't hear them the way they're saying it. You see it in a whole different way. Ooh. Okay. And it's a very scary way. Shout out to my brother Crazy Legs in here. Crazy yeah, Legs. Yeah, telling me to get in line and start all over again. No, mister. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the man, homie. So it, it, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, mm, yeah, you, but you do, you do hear the person that's speaking to you you do i did i did experience that yes so you're basically in you're basically on borderline between life you're, and death. You're, you're, you're definitely in another world wow like i was never a person i was never a person that believed in afterlife or you oh, know, see i do that's or, why i'm so or, intrigued or, or they call it i think well i forgot what they call it it's like a midsection of your life when you go when you're in the middle of life and death. It's transition. Right. Yeah. Now I do because I know what that between life and death is because I was there yeah. and, and I actually experienced it. It's something I wouldn't even wish that upon my worst enemy. It's really? Just, it's just it's just it's hard to really explain it, but yeah, I was there. Wow. I was there. So and I, what is and I saw what a lot of things you've seen a lot a lot of things and you remember all of that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You can write a book on that. You know that, right? Oh no, we jo jo join the line because that's already that's already even works. <laughs> see, I'm already with you. See. But um, yeah, it's just um. So what is that? Look, crazy, crazy! Like wrote the name. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. What is that? Now, now I'm a believer. And before I wasn't a believer. What does that do to your mental health? To my like, mental can you, yeah, like, can you give us any advice for someone who's going through this? Like, how did you come out of this and, and heal yourself and get back on track with things? It takes time. And seeing the outpour of the support I, 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 worldwide. I, I, right. What you got, I, I took a whole summer off. Yeah. To get myself right. Physically, mentally, yeah. especially yeah. mentally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, physical as well. Because it's like, you you know, I went through a transformation of a, of a rebirth. Mm -hmm. I, I felt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I had to, like, you could ask my partner who's in here. Like, I had to learn how to walk. I had a, had a, had a little thing that was teaching you know how to walk you know i had to really re rehabilitate rehabilitate myself right you know what I'm and all that stuff like i was even playing with legos i was doing legos that you know the legos is to stimulate you, right your mind and everything and, and even doing the legos like a simple lego that maybe a kid could do within a day or two it took right. about two weeks right you know what i'm saying but you know I did it. Well, I also heard through my little research that you have three little ones that, well, not so little, but that yeah. that you actually live for and have made everything possible for you to get through. You have any words on that? On being a daddy? I love being a daddy. <laughs> I love it. I love it even more now. Yeah. I'm not gonna. All right. So how can I say this? I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know, and I and I want and I want. Whoever's in here and whoever's watching, don't get off. And I really want y'all to pay attention to what I'm about to say. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was the best father in the world. We all commit our mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went through a lot of bad stuff and everything. And, and sometimes I will put my anger in front of my children. You know, and I will do things like maybe not see them. You know, and, and, and it's just, you know, I went through a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all I have is my family. Yeah. And when it comes to my children, especially that everything that I went through, 
-hmm. I would never ever like I look at all my children's faces from my oldest who is 25 now mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and to my youngest you know and and today today's even you know my stepdaughter's today's her birthday you know what I'm saying like even the ones who are not mine but I still right care for, right I never want them to go through a situation that I'm going through Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that if I do leave this earth, I want to make sure that they're secured. Mm -hmm. And I want to give them the time, as much time as I can. Mm -hmm. That's why I spend enough time with my children now. Like now, now I get it. Now I get it. As you get older, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You get that your children is first. And now I, I spend enough, you know, I work hard. I do everything what I do now, I do it for them. You know what I'm saying? And all mm -hmm. that stuff. Like, I don't care about anything else out, out there in that world. Just my, my family is more important. You know? But it's great to be. I love being a dad. I love it. What's love your favorite it. thing about being a dad? My favorite thing is that you get to see them grow up and you get to see them do things that you never expected for them to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, now they're teenagers. Now, you know, my kids are not kids anymore. They're teenagers now. Right. Now, you know, my son is into the girlfriend now. You know what I'm saying? My daughter, you know, she has a best friend that's about to move to Florida. She wants to spend time with them. You know, my oldest son is an entrepreneur as well. You know, nice. it's just, you know, it's just so many things. And, you know, it's like now, it's like now I'm working even harder because, you know, they're in their little world now. There's not more yeah. really no you, you will get them and, you, you know, they want to be with you all the time. Now it's like, yo, dad, I got plans. Dad, I got this. And it becomes harder now to spend more time with them, you know? Yeah, it's like the timing has been a little off in some sort of sense. But you know, it I hasn't went through stopped it with my I went through it with my oldest. But I'm not going to lie, but once they get older, they end up coming back to you again. Absolutely. We need our parents more when we get older. Yeah, so when they come, you know, they get older, they're like, hold up, you know? But I also, I also think that they went through the scare of their life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, now it's like, hold up, now let me really spend time with my dad. You know what I'm saying? And no matter how busy, like no matter how busy I get, because I do get busy, and I do, you know, I, I, I forget things, and you know, like I get, I'm a workaholic. Yeah. But I always make time. I always make time for my family, always. And we got married, and you yep. just started a whole new life. And I, I, I just want to, like, uh, give everything to your wife and blessings because it takes a real, real, real strong individual to hold down a family, to hold down a man she's been with that is in the industry. And now dealing with him having cancer and becoming a caretaker, I'm sure. And then going through the whole coma with you and, like, I can't even imagine that world. So I just always want to send my blessings to her because she's definitely very she's strong. My, she, she, you know, she's my rock. Absolutely. You, know you can say that. She, she's my rock, but, but you know, she's, she never left my back. She was always there for me. That's loyalty and, and, and love. And, 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 you know, it, ain't, it hasn't been an easy road. I can imagine. It ain't an easy road. I don't want everybody to think this is a hump. You know, we... we nope. You know, even to now, it's still, you know, but we stick it out. That's what matters. We stick it out. And like I said, she, my children, they're, they're my number ones. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Ones, you know, and she's, you know, she, she's definitely, she's definitely my rock. She's definitely I, my rock. I do want to give a shout out to all the daddies in here. Everybody has been putting daddy of three, daddy of five. You got all the daddies excited. <laughs> Better be a dad. <laughs> and we have we have to be dads because we we have this youth that is kind of lost in, in society nowadays, and we just really need to be on our kids because it starts from home. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know that that's what I try to tell people all the time. Like always, watch over your kids. You know they're always yours. Over your kids, you know what I'm saying? You never know. You know you see everything that's going on right now. You know, yeah. You know. You know. And I don't like calling myself a part-time dad because I'm not a part-time dad. You're I'm not a photo op dad either. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do that part-time thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, you know, they're, I'm, I'm fully with them all the time. I call them every day. I make sure they're all right, whatever. 
this and that. Yeah. You know, like I even tell them, like, listen, man, you know, your dad is crazy. Like, <laughs> You know, they will respect it and always love you, you for that. Sure, you make sure you let them know that I'm, you know, I'm still here. You know, fear me. But then That's also, right. But then, but then I also make them sh make sure they, my kids fear me too because I tell them all the time, like, yo, your father knows the world. Know everything that I would never know because I know. You know. What I'm That's saying? right. Believe me, you could be crossing the corner. There will be at least two people in that corner know who I am. You gotta put a little fear in them, just a little bit. They, they, they know that they, they definitely know that <laughs> they definitely know that so I wanted to switch a little bit off topic into another topic being Latino in the industry talk to us a little bit about that versus the 90s versus now any type of changes any hardships you've experienced any advice you can give for the ones that are trying to get into the business it's great being Latino now you know, I interviewed someone else that said that. I got to think of the name because I've interviewed a lot of people, but they said it's the best time. This is the best time to be alive. It's the I'm best proud time. Of my I'm proud. I'm, I'm Ecuadorian. I'm not even Puerto Rican. I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm not Dominican. I'm not Colombian. No, I'm Ecuadorian. I'm, a, I'm, you know, based. My parents are based out of Guayaquil, Ecuador. You know what I'm saying? My father's okay. Cuban. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm proud. I'm proud to be like, I'm proud to be a Latino. You know, yeah, I'm proud of it, and this is the best time. This is the very best time, especially that you have a, a hypocrite of a, of a president. Don't even put me there. You know what I'm saying? Who, 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 who is, his mind state is. Mm, He's know? crazy. He made up a lie about him throwing a pitch in the Yankee game. Like he lied about that. Like, you know, <laughs> like come on, man. This is this is the time now when all Latin. All of us need to get together and really mm -hmm. form something to show people that, yo, you know, we ain't going nowhere. I, you know, I, I, our numbers are crazy. Yeah. In the United States. So they yeah. don't really know. Okay. Yeah. But definitely been recognized. But definitely. I'm proud of being, I'm proud, proud to be Latino in this industry. How have we been doing? more powerful being a Latin in this industry. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I feel the same way, too. Sometimes it's hard to be a, a female Latino, but, you know, just get in line and we'll keep it moving. That's all. That's it. That's it ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. How are we dealing with COVID? How's your COVID experience been? <laughs> and I know a lot of gigs must have not came through and Boy, stopped. Yeah, we're not, I'm not working. Yeah, we're not working. You know, the clubs are closed and everything, but it's been a, it's been a rough COVID Okay. But then again, it's been a great COVID. Yeah. Rough because, you know, you know, the way it's going on, people getting yeah. sick, people dying. You know, I lost, I lost my, I lost a, uh, my aunt, which is like my second mother to COVID. Wow. It's, so it's real, guys. It's, people no, keep saying it's, it's no, real. It's, it's super, it's super real. But then again, COVID got me closer to my family. Mm -hmm. I haven't spent enough. I, like I said, I'm always busy. I never have time for nobody. Like, it's a miracle you're talking to me right now. You know what I'm saying? But I never have time. I never have time. I'm always on the move. I'm always working. I'm always here. I'm, I'm having meetings here. I'm doing this. Then at night, I'm working. You know what I'm saying? Then on the weekends, I'm on the radio sometimes. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. But ever since now, when the world went on pause, I actually now got to spend enough time with my family, you know, which was a great part. But then also the best part about COVID is that I developed a show. Yes. That Let's is, talk about that it. That is, that is phenomenal. Phenomenal that I am now up to my third season. Goodness gracious. You know what I'm saying? And just to let you know that the finale, I had a finale on Friday, the finale for season two, I averaged over 60,000 viewers. Wow. That's so awesome. 60,000 viewers. And, and the, you know, the premise is very um, interesting and also the demographic that you're dealing with. You're, you're going into the crates, you know, you're putting DJs, <laughs> from all over the place onto an Instagram screen and, and putting themselves out there and making them compete 
and then you have artists coming on and then you have special guest DJs that are critiquing. Like, can you give us just a little rundown on how the show is run? All right, so the, show's called, so the show is called Turn the Tables. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Turn the Tables Show. Um, started in March. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a, it's a game show for DJs. But it's a game show for DJs, not to show people that they know how to, you know, they're nice and they, they, they can rock. No. We yeah. want to give you real DJs, meaning if you know your craft, if you know your music, because a lot of these DJs don't know music. They think they know. They only know how to press a button and they know what's hot now. But they don't know what was hot back then. That they don't know their history. Artists. They don't know their history. So that's what I brought back. I brought back a game show. It's like a Jeopardy show for DJs. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, every every night, you know, I do it from Monday to Friday. Nice. From Monday to Friday, every night at nine o'clock. It used to be at three, but now that everything is changing, yeah, back to work and everything. Now I switched it to nine, so people could at least still come home and check out the show. So you know, basically, um, I'm also what I'm also doing is I'm opening my doors to DJs that want to get noticed. Right. They, they want to, you know, they want to, you know, they want to get known, you know, they want to get recognized. And especially now with this COVID situation that nothing is open, none of these clubs are open, none of these up and coming DJs, they're not going to get that chance to get that shine. So what I did was I opened up my platform, my social media, and I actually made it so the DJs could get noticed. Even if they failed in the show and they didn't do that great on the show, but at least somebody is watching. Right. And there's somebody always watching my show. And there's a lot. I had a lot of DJs that's been on my show that have that's have opportunities now. Like some, and they're not even champions. Then it wasn't even champs or made it to championship. Like a lot of these DJs, like they're doing shows now on Sirius XM. Yeah. You, know, you know, it became a family. Like they all became friends now they're doing ig lives together like they're really becoming that's so dope yeah you know and you know i bring artists i bring a lot of big artists you know they become the judges you know i have brought a lot of people of course you know i brought joe of course you know jada kiss kelly Golden was on my show yeah um so a many, lot there's so many like and, and even the big djs like kick capri was on my show mm -hmm. Clark Kent, dj scratch you know, that's a nice yeah. and, and you know it, it, it it's, it's just a great thing just to see a bunch of djs from all over the world that's the best part it's not even just from new york i have from all over the world mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they get on my show and they do their thing and it's also a learning experience they get to learn they get to learn the music they get to learn a lot of things so then when the world does open up and things now they get their mind is different on how to dj yeah they're not doing it for the wrong reason they're not doing it because they want to make money they're not doing it because they want to get girls they're not doing it because they want to smoke on hookahs and buy a lot no you know what i'm saying now they're becoming DJs. They're learning. They're learning their music. They're learning their craft. They're learning why this song was sampled from that song. Yeah. They're learning how to do their cue points. They're, they're, you know, it's just a lot of things that the DJ is now learning from my show. And it's becoming very, very, very big. So I just and finished. So I just finished my second season. So I'm just chilling now. But season three is coming back August thirty first. Are we um, bringing this to television eventually? Eventually, eventually. But I'm in talks right now. I've been doing a lot of zooms. I'm not gonna <laughs> say why, but eventually. And season three is gonna be also different. I'm gonna bring something. It's gonna still be on Instagram. I'm gonna bring another platform also. For yeah. Season three. Oh, I just posted something up. I think it was today I posted it. I think I posted something up today with a green screen in the back. So I'm just giving little hints on how different season three is going to be. Yeah, you gotta we gotta revamp our shows and, and upgrade a little bit yeah. to keep our, our the interest there. Absolutely. What are your top three DJs? 
Your personal top three DJs. Come on, my heavy hitters. Enough Camelo, <laughs> Cash One. What up, e friend? That's it. That's my top three DJs. My heavy Those hitters. Are your my heavy now, you know, scratch. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those are my guys. What what in your opinion makes a DJ stand out? For the ones that are inspiring and, and want to like pursue this career of DJing, because you know it, it's not easy. That, that they do it for the right reason and they know, they know, ill skills. You are so out of it. You know, he, ill skills. Cast one was like the third guest there. <laughs> I know. I'm reading the comments. If you want pro style, go hit a pro style yourself, my brother, because he's dodging me. <laughs> right, so like I said, so like I said, um. You gotta know how to rock the people. It's not about you playing for yourself. It's not about you playing for yourself. You don't become a DJ to play for you. No. You're not. You're not your own Walkman. If the, if people don't know what a Walkman is, Google it. Yeah, and you have to be diverse. You have to play different type of music. You can DJ any type of music and it still be dope. Look at what D Nice is doing, putting Barry White, mixing it in with something else. Like this shit is dope. You just have to know your music. You just got to know everything. Put it like this. Google DJ and then start studying it. That's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. And that's it. Bottom line. But I, I'm happy about the show. I'm happy that how it's growing. And I'm happy that I'm opening up a platform for DJs. Especially Absolutely. Especially DJs. You know what I'm saying? And they get the record, get recognized. And get, you know, they get to go to a higher level. And, you know, I don't ask for much. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that they're there. I'm yeah. That they, you know, I'm happy that I, you know, I gave them that step so they could step up over the mountain. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Um, there was a live a couple of months back with I think the DJ set, and I think apparently you had told them not to play certain music of a certain artist, and it was done. Um. I don't want to get too much into it, but there was a lot of um, touchy comments and things that went on from both sides. Are we good? Are we cleared out? Is that over with? I'm fine. Not even I'm fine. Turn the tables. August 31st. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> August 31st. Turn the tables. Season three. <laughs> what do we have planned for the rest of 2020 and 21? Anything you want to promote? <laughs> Turn the tables, August 31st, <laughs> season three. Oh, my God, that made me laugh. I was I was waiting to see what you would say. <laughs> Great on my side. I'm good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I want to let you know that whatever you've been sharing has been very motivating and very empowering. So if you want, please continue to share and keep us updated. Um, there's so much love for you and respect and such hard work that you do. Thank you. Um, and it's a blessing to even have you here speaking with me right now. So I'm glad that we have that in the book. Okay. And ho hopefully this is a start to, you know, just industry family or something. You come back on the show when we start of in course, studio so we can meet. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sure. Anything sure. you want to say to your, to your viewers that are watching? Turn the tables, August 31st, <laughs> season three. We'll be back. <laughs> Absolutely. We love you. Please you. Love continue you too, to stay blessed. Thank you. And uh, whatever you want to talk about some stuff, just let me know. We do it. Of course. I got you. I got you. Thank you for, the, thank you for this interview. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk again. Okay, love? Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs> so there you have it. DJ Pretty Lou or Pretty Lou. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and watching and, and sharing and just um, taking in what he has to say. Please follow me at The DS and Show on YouTube. Please share the video. Um, my social media is everywhere. You can tune in to Amazon TV, Vocal, Apple, Spotify, MNN in Manhattan, the Bronx Net, Queens. I'm all over the place. So please tune in. Um, I want to say what's up to Tommy Riss.
Mr. Bless, thank you for supporting and scheduling this whole thing. NY112, thank you, JR1111. Um, thank you for all the DJs that tuned in, good vibes only. Thank you, Jasmine Selena. Please check her out. She's a beautiful female that has a beautiful voice. DJ Jehovah, Cred is, was here. I mean, we have so many people come in. Um, so thank you once again, and stay tuned for the DSN show. If not, you better get in line.